Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're gonna show you how you can go in with SAS in your new adaptive theme. So we're gonna show you how to install SAS and Compass on your machine, and then how to run Compass Watch and a little bit about what's going on when you do that. So let's get started right now. <music> So one of the most important parts about working in any sort of theming environment is going to be your styles. And because of that, uh, CSS is going to be an important part of any sub theme or any theme that you're building. Unless of course, this is a theme that you've purchased and you're just installing it and you're not touching it visually, you're going to have to be uh, commanding most of the site styles, layout, all of that stuff using your CSS. Now, Adaptive Theme comes built in with a nice little SAS framework, although it's using uh, Compass is something I haven't been using myself much lately. However, uh, SAS is a incredible tool to learn how to use, and it's something that I would highly recommend. So if you don't necessarily see the importance of reasons to use SAS, by all means, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can use this theme without using using SAS, however, I would highly recommend using SAS for your own, own personal growth and benefit in learning this new skill if you haven't used it before. If you have used SAS or LESS or any other preprocessor, then you've probably clearly seen the value there. So to get going using SAS, we need to install SAS and we also need to install Compass. If you go to SAS's website at sas-lang.com and then the slash install page, it'll tell you a couple ways that you can use SAS. You can use it through CodeKit or through the Compass app. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other apps here like Prepros and Scout, Live Reload, those types of uh, applications. And now for this video, we're gonna show you how to do it using command line. Now, if you have a Mac, then Mac comes pre-installed with Ruby, so you should be all set to install uh, SAS. If you have a Windows computer, you're going to go ahead and have to use the Ruby installer, the single click installer. Now, let's go ahead and come to our command line or our command prompt if you're on Windows, and we're gonna go ahead and run the gem install SAS command. Now, you can do this from anywhere in your system because it's going to install it globally. Now, if you get an error here saying you have permissions issues, you're going to have to run it with sudo, like sudo gem install SAS, like so. Uh, so I would go ahead and, and try it without the sudo first, just like so. Uh, and see if that works for you. So as you can see, it installed SAS correctly for me without any errors. However, if you get some big red permissions errors or anything like that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do the sudo version. Now, we can make sure that we have SAS installed just by typing SAS space hyphen V, and that's gonna tell us which version of SAS we have installed, which is the latest at the time of this video, 3.4.1.16, uh, which is Selective Steve. Now we also need to install Compass. We can do that just by doing gem install Compass, like so. And again, if you're getting permissions errors, go ahead and use sudo. Now, like I said, I am in fact uh, running this command from the Drupal uh, the Drupal site we have going, but you can run it anywhere because it's installing it globally on your system. Okay, so Compass is installed. Now let's actually change directory into our themes. So from the root of our theme, we can change directory into sites, all themes, and then the name of your theme. Okay. Now I'm gonna do a quick ls just to make sure that I am in my theme. And you can see one of the files in here is this config.rb file. Now the config.rb file, if you're not familiar, is really just a Ruby file to let Compass know where and how to output your code. So let's check this config.rb file. And as you can see, the current environment is set to development. Uh, our CSS directory is just CSS. Our SAS directory is just SAS. You can verify that just simply by seeing SAS, CSS. And we have an images directory at CSS slash images, which is right here, okay? And we can scroll down here. And as you can see, it says output style equals, and really what this is saying is if the environment is set to development, then use the expanded. And if it's set to uh, anything else, use compact. Now, the reason why this is important is because basically when we're in production code, we want our CSS to be minified and compressed. However, if we're developing it, we want to be able to read our CSS. We want it to be human readable. So uh, because as you saw up here, development 
uh, environment equals development. If we scroll down, this uh, ternary expression equates to true, and therefore the output style is going to be equal to expanded. Now, uh, relative assets are also equal to true. And we have some SAS options here, like we have if environment is develop, then debug is equal to true. And if it's not, always update is equal to true. Okay, so this isn't too important because we're not gonna be having to modify this file, at least not in this video. So we can just exit out of that. So now that we have Compass and SAS installed, we can use SAS in this instance simply by just typing Compass Watch. Now the reason why we're running a compass command here and not a watch command is because what compass is going to do is it's going to actually run the SAS pre-processing for us. And if you're not familiar with what compass is, it's essentially a set of tools to help you in building a SAS. You can check out compass's website to see exactly what all that entails, but it's a, essentially a SAS toolkit. So it's an extension of SAS that adds additional features. So if we type compass watch like so, it's going to use that config.rb file, and we're going to get a message saying, Compass is watching for changes, press Control c to stop. So now that Compass is watching for changes, we can simply come to our CSS, and we come to uh, not the CSS files, but the SAS folder, and you can come to any of these files. Let's just check, uh, check out global styles. Uh, you can see that it's importing this base CSS file here. Uh, for some reason, my Sublime Text is having issues with these double forward slashing uh, uh, comments here in SAS, these double forward slashes equal a comment. And so you can do commenting like this or like this. So this actually should be grayed out, but for some reason, I think maybe it's a problem with the syntax highlighting package that I'm using right now. So as you can see, we just have some standard uh, SAS code here. For instance, we're using a variable to set the background color, which is the variable set to page. Let's actually just come in here and add a new background color to the body just to make sure that everything's working fine. So we can set the background to just 000, which is black. And if we come to our command line, you should see that uh, it has written this global styles.css file. Now, there's some word of warning about how Compass is using uh, some of this stuff. Like I said, I'm personally not using Compass a whole lot anymore myself. And in later videos, I'm gonna show you how to maybe pull out Compass and use something else. However, now that Compass has watched and compiled our SAS files, we can come ahead and check out this uh, homepage here, refresh. And as you can see, it's effectively getting those CSS changes. In fact, if we change it to anything else, right, we can just add 00 and then FF here. You can see it's compress, uh, compiling again. We refresh. Now we have the super ugly blue. So let's come back to our CSS. There we go. We've deleted that. And SAS is compiling just fine. And we're ready to start really getting into theming our site now that we are all set up with SAS and Compass. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.